Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am excited about today's word. I'm bringing you today's word for August 4th, 2020. August 4th is my wife's birthday. So I need to start off by saying my wife is watching right now, Isabella Pina. I love you, babe, and you are a blessing to the world. Everybody that knows you knows that you're such a blessing to everyone everywhere. So on today, if you know my wife personally, please reach out to her, reach out to her on social media. On social media, she is Isabella Inspired. On, on, uh, on Instagram and on Twitter, but reach out to her and, uh, you know, connect with her, be a blessing to her. Uh, I, I, I just love my wife and, and she's such a blessing to so many people. So let's wish my wife an amazing birthday and let's get into the word for this morning. So I started a new series yesterday entitled Greater is Coming. Now I've been talking about this for a while, actually. Uh, so Greater is Coming. This is part two and we're studying the life of David. So the title of today's message is actually this. I've preached this before. I've shared this multiple times. I love highlighting the selection of David, and I call this message Destiny's Child. You are Destiny's Child. Let's talk about it, all right? So yesterday we saw how God told the prophet Samuel uh, to go to Bethlehem, and to Jesse's house, and he did. And so he told the prophet to go to Jesse's house in Bethlehem because he was supposed to anoint one of Jesse's sons to be the next king of Israel. So he's there. And it's disappointing to me that while Samuel was preparing, because remember, he said he was there under the guise of worship. And so he was like, hey, Jesse, I'm here to worship. So let's go through the ceremonial uh, uh, ritual rite of cleansing. And so your sons have to be part of the ceremony. So he's there cleansing and they're going through this rite. They're going through this ritual uh, um, and they're doing it with the prophet and Jesse and seven of eight sons. And it bothers me that while they're going through the whole ceremony, that that Jesse never said, well, hold on. You know, my youngest son, the shepherd boy, he's not here. Let me go get him. And, and it also bothers me that not one of the brothers said anything. It's like, it's like David didn't have a friend in the camp. You know what I'm saying? And so like nobody, not one person spoke up and said, hold on for a minute. We shouldn't be doing this without David. If you're going to do this, right, if this is a special ceremony and this prophet of God is in our house and we're, we're washing our hands and we're going through the whole ceremony of cleansing, shouldn't David be here? Nobody said anything. It's like they forgot about David. But when the world forgets about you, God will never forget about you. So they forgot about David, but God did not. And so they go through the whole thing and, and he was like, all right, well, is this the one? And he thought the first one was the one. Oh, this is surely the firstborn. Here's the blessing. God said, no, you're looking at the outward appearance. I look at the heart. He's not the one. Psh, okay. Next one, not the one. Okay. Next one, not the one. And after he goes through all seven, he was like, well, wait a minute. Uh, God sent me here. I know God sent me here. Do you have any, any more sons? He was like, yeah, we ha I have another boy, but he's you know out there with sheep. He was like, well, then go get him. He said, go get him, send for him, and we will not sit down until he gets here. Like, what's wrong with you, dude? I came here. You should have had all your sons lined up. And so, so think about how awkward this moment is. Here you have Jesse sends one of his boys, hey, go get David. And now he's standing there with the other six boys <laughs> and with the prophet, and they're waiting on David. He said, we're not even going to sit down until he gets here. So now he's like, all right. They're standing there and they're like, what is this? I mean, the brother's like, what, what, what is going on? And then David arrives. And when David arrives, the Bible says, this is 1 Samuel 16, verses 12 and 13. When David shows up and he walks into the room, then all of a sudden the Bible says, this son was good looking. Now, I tell you, I'm going to say it again. If the Bible says you look good, you look good. So he walked in. He was good looking. He was a healthy young man. He was very handsome, the Bible says. And the Lord said to Samuel, the Lord spoke immediately, get up and anoint him. He is the one. I'm saying there will be times in your life where you walk into a room and the Lord says, he is the one. 
She is the one. So it said, he is the one. And so Samuel took the oil, the horn with the oil in it and went up and he had a ceremony right there in front of his father, uh, David's father, in front of David's brothers. And he anointed the youngest son, the eighth son, right? The last son born. He anointed him to be the next king of Israel right in front. The Bible says right in front of his brothers. And then the Bible says that the spirit of the Lord, once he was anointed, the spirit of the Lord came upon David with great power from that day on. And then the prophet left and he went back to Ramah. So what does this mean to you today? You're like, this is a Tuesday morning. I got a lot of stuff going on. What does this mean to you today? I have three things to share with you on this morning. Right now, I want you to rid your heart, rid your mind of all distractions, lock in. Three things. Number one, here we go. God called you. Look at me. God called you by grace, not by human effort, not by human performance. God called you because he loves you. God calls you because he made, he made plans for you before the world began. As David's brothers were looking on, the Lord had the prophet anoint him to be the next king of Israel. The spirit of the Lord came upon him, the Bible says, from that day. And this was done without any explanation. This was done without any qualifications. It wasn't like the, the prophet said, now hold on, let me go through this checklist. Do you have this degree? <laughs> Did you go to this school? How long have you been saved? You know, uh, what is your Sunday school attendance record? No, without any qualifications, without any explanation, without any fanfare, in a simple home, in the pre presence of a family that didn't even acknowledge him, God anointed David to be the next king of Israel. God picked him. He was picked for his purpose. He was picked for his assignment. And David didn't even ask for it. This wasn't something that was birthed in David's heart. This was not an act of David's will. It wasn't like David was working for it or trying to earn it or deep. It wasn't even something he imagined. This was his destiny. He was picked for his purpose. I'm telling you that you are destiny's child. You are a child of destiny. That David could have never imagined himself being king. He was the eighth son. People at home, it seemed like they didn't even like him. You know what I'm saying? So how could he imagine himself being the king of Israel. No, he was out there tending sheep, minding his own business, and he thought nobody was watching, but God was watching. Oh my God, God was watching, and God had plans for him from the foundations of the world, and without any human effort, the Lord selected David, and because he was destined, he was destined before the world began. This is the grace of God. This is how God operates. God calls you into the plans and purposes that he prepared for you before the world began. He doesn't call you because you're good. He calls you because he's good. He doesn't call you because you earned it. He calls you because Jesus earned it for you. God calls you into your destiny so that you can become the man, the woman that he called, destined, designed, and desires for you to be. This is about God, not about you. You are destiny's child. Open up your heart to your destiny. You got it? All right, number two. No human can stop your divine assignment. So there's a divine assignment, right? And their poison cannot stop your purpose. No human can stop your divine assignment. David's father didn't think enough about him to have him in the lineup. Not one of his seven brothers said anything either, but none of that could stop God's plan. So let me tell you something, look at me. Maybe you feel like you are overlooked by the people around you, the people you work with. Maybe. You feel like you are purposefully, not just overlooked, but you are purposefully omitted from key meetings and ceremonies and situations and conversations. It's like they didn't invite you on purpose, like they left you out on purpose. Sometimes you might feel like you're flat out oppressed by others. So you could be overlooked and omitted and oppressed, but that doesn't matter. You know why? Because you're destined. It, no, no human can stop you from your destiny. Listen, what God has for you is for you and no one can stop it. Nobody can stop God's plan for your life. You are destiny's child. We serve a God, watch this, who when, when that time comes, we serve a God who will bless you right in front of those who dismissed you. <laughs> he will prepare a table. David wrote this later in, in the 23rd Psalm. He said, we serve a God who will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. God will make them your audience. God will make sure that they have to show up for your promotion ceremony. They will watch as God elevates you in, into positions that you didn't even ask for and they've been sweating for, they've been struggling struggling for it. They've been begging for it. They've been pleading for it. And then you get it and you didn't even ask for it. That's the grace of God. We 
serve a God who will bypass norms to bless you. Even the prophet of God was right there saying, okay, this is the firstborn. The norm is the firstborn should get the greatest blessing and God will bypass the norms to bless you. Hebrew tr tradition said that the blessing should have went to Eliad, but God said, no, by his grace, he had other plans. God overruled the norms to propel David into his destiny. I'm telling you, we serve a God who, who, will, who will cause you to increase even when they say, well, wait a minute, you're not qualified. Well, wait a minute, we have a policy in place. Well, wait a minute, listen, God will bypass policies for you. God will overrule stuff for you. God will open doors for you that no man can close. He will close doors for you that no man can, can open. I'm talking about this is the hand of God and his purpose, once his purpose is in motion, no one can stop you. And then let me tell you that the oil of blessing that is reserved for you is for you. That oil could not have been given to anyone else, even though the prophet almost tried to give it to somebody else. What God has for you is for you. No one can take your blessing. That's why you don't need to get upset when other people get promoted. That's why you don't need to get upset when other people get blessed. Matter of fact, you should be happy for them. You should be able to celebrate the diversities of giftings and callings without jealousy because what God has for them is for them. What God has for you is for you. And so you can celebrate them. Look at me. Building someone else up does not diminish you in any way. Building someone else up does not tear you down in any way. When you know who you are and you know what you're called to do, you can celebrate other people because you know that that doesn't diminish you or lower you in any way. You are who you are and you can celebrate other people and you're free to be you and they're free to be them and, and that's how we're supposed to live. We can honor them and they can honor us because honor is the culture of the kingdom. And then number three and finally, I only have three points for you this morning. Last point, we serve a God who releases <laughs> unexpected blessings. I'm saying we serve a God who releases unexpected blessings. I'm talking about God will give you the unexpected. God made plans for you before the world began. God has foreknowledge of all your decisions and all your actions. Nothing catches God off guard. God knows everything, right? God is never surprised. So let me just pause here. Side note, this doesn't really have anything to do with my message, but I'm going to slide it in real quick. Side note. This is why God is not freaking out over COVID-19. This is why God is not moved by what's going on in the world right now. God already knew that this would happen. And so every, every promise that God made you is still valid. God is still God. God is still sitting on the circle of the earth. You got it? All right, so let me get back to my message. So while God knows everything and we do not, God reveals things to us in ways that are progressive and incremental. Let me say that. God's vision is progressive and it's incremental. So God releases vision in increments, right? He gives you, he doesn't tell you everything. He gives you a little bit so you can maximize the season that you're in. And it's also progressive, meaning that the more you walk with God, the more vision he can give you, right? God can, can trust you with stuff today that he couldn't trust you with 10 years ago. So today God can give you this much vision, whereas 10 years ago, he could only give you this much, right? Because you couldn't handle it. So God's vision is incremental and God's vision is progressive. So God is always revealing things to us about our future. But sometimes, so when God reveals things to us about our future, he's preparing us for what he's going to do. But sometimes God doesn't prepare us at all. Sometimes God just gives us something that's totally a surprise. I'm, I'm talking about God. We serve a God who can give you the unexpected. In one moment, David was tending sheep. In one moment, he was out there protecting his father's sheep, doing what he always did. In the next moment, his brother came and got him. He goes home. There's this strange man in the house. What's going on here? The man said he's a prophet. Oh, there's some oil. What is this about? Boom, he's anointed to be the next king of Israel. The spirit of the, of the Lord came upon him. This was beyond his wildest dreams. This was completely unexpected. This was not something that he asked for. This was not something that he wanted. It was something that God wanted from the foundations of the world. We serve a God who will give you unexpected blessings. Say amen to that. See, there are things that you're called to do that you never asked for, right? I, I'm a witness. There, there are things that, that you're called to do that you're like, well, I didn't ask for this. Now, as big as it is and as good as it is, you got to know that you never concocted that in your own heart. Like this was God. Like, so God, I never asked for this. You asked, you, you put this in my heart. And since you put it in my heart, now while you, this series is about faith and patience, right? So while you're waiting on God and, and you will get frustrated, I mean, that's life. You are going to get frustrated from time to time. And you're like, is this really going to happen? You got to remind yourself, first of all, hold on, hold on, hold on for a minute. First of all, I never asked for this, right? So first of all, this isn't something I asked for. I, did, I, I never asked for this. I never wanted this. 
you gave it to me. So, so, so David was anointed to be the next king, king of Israel when he was 13. I mean, 17. 13 years later, he became king. So it took 13 years. So in that 13 year span, we're going to learn, we're going to study his life. And we're going we're gonna to see that he went through all kinds of difficult situations. And you will go through difficult situations as, as well. But you got to remind yourself that, listen, I didn't ask for this, right? So we serve a God that will bless you beyond your wildest dreams. This is Ephesians 3 and 20. We serve a God who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think or even imagine according to the power that works within us. So as you walk with God, and he begins to reveal your destiny to you, and he shows you things, listen, sometimes you're going to feel like, that's crazy. Like, why would God want to do that with me? Like, my wife and I really had a problem with this. Like, I'm, I was raised on welfare, and she was raised with no running water, no electricity. So when God shows us stuff, he's like, whoa, 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 what? You want me to do what? Why? I'm not qualified. I mean, why? What? What? Like, why would you? There's, there's other people more qualified, God. <laughs> like, you know, hey, you, you have other people. Uh, why would you, why would you want to do that with me? Well, you know why? Because God planned because it's destiny because your destiny's child. So your job is really just to open up your heart to God's best. Stop fighting it. Stop fighting it. If God wants to give it to you, then say yes. And, and maybe it doesn't make sense. And maybe it's beyond your wildest dreams. And maybe it's something that you never saw yourself doing. But if God wants you to have it, then faith says yes to God's grace. You got it? And then let me start to wrap this up. Sometimes God will just interrupt your day like he did with, with, with David. God will interrupt your day. God will interrupt your plans in order to bless you. Not necessarily because you did anything to earn it or to deserve it. It's just because God loves you. That's, and he wants to bless you. And you're his son. You're his daughter. Get over it. You are destiny's child. So you are born with a destiny. That's already mapped out. Your job is to find it, follow it, and finish it before you die. You got it? You are destiny's child. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, like David, I know you have destined me for my purpose. When I am overlooked by others, you notice. When I am omitted from the lineup, you have a way of stopping everything until I show up. No man can stop me from what you have destined for me. I am destiny's child. Your kingdom plans and purposes for me shall come to pass. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You elevate me right in front of them <laughs> just to show how much you love your children. Now, you don't do this because I deserve it. You do this because of your grace. My job is to receive it by faith. I believe and receive greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. Do you want my notes? Go to todaysword.org, click on the subscribe button, and put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. So sign up, get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. Listen, go into this day knowing that you are destiny's child. You are destiny's child. You are a child of destiny. God has a book in heaven with your name on it. Your job is to discover it, to develop in it, and then to deploy into your destiny. Do me a favor, please leave some comments in the chat. Once again, if you know my wife, wish her a happy birthday, uh, and then share this message on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. I love you, and God loves you more. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.